Thank you everyone, um, and thank you Rado for welcoming me here and asking me to talk. And um, I'm just going to go through a bit of my background, why I became vegan and vegetarian in the beginning. So is anyone here vegan? Got a few. And anyone vegetarian? So we've got a few of them as well. Okay, so um, I'll just start by saying I've been vegan for 14 years and I've never really looked back. Um, when I became vegan, it was quite hard back in the day because we didn't have um, you know, soy chocolate and ice cream as much as we do now, which was very hard for me to give up. And so um, I run this website, Viva La Vegan, so Rado's got a photo of a part of the website there, and um, that's been going on since 2006. And I started that to release my recipe calendars that I released. And I have a lot of um, recipes on the website as well, and a lot of raw ones. And um, my focus with Viva La Vegan online and in person, I attend a lot of festivals and I give a lot of talks, is um, it's an interactive multimedia site and it um, focuses on positive education, information and vegan outreach. So the world, word vegan was invented by Donald Watson in 1940s. And a vegan means a strict vegetarian. So this means that you don't consume any animals or animal products. Byproducts, secretions, anything that comes from an animal, I do not consume. And um, that means chickens and fish. Some people get a bit confused, but fishes are actually an animal. And um, also, we don't consume any animal products. That includes honey, that includes eggs, that includes gelatin. So in the beginning, I had this little book that I brought, brought that I carried around in my bag with me. It said it was like an additives book, so it went through all the colouring, all the additives as well, and also had a lot of animal products and the numbers that you looked out for. And that helped me in the beginning to work out what was in my food and what wasn't, because the, I don't even think online was happening in 1994. I'm not sure. Does anyone know? Just. Just, wasn't it? And um, so I had this little book that helped me with what was and what wasn't vegan. So that really helped in the beginning stages. And now online there's just so many websites and there's just so many alternative products now than the mainstream fair. And also I don't wear fur, leather, silk or wool and I don't um, go to anything that supports or promotes um, exploitation of any animal in any of its forms. And I just think, um, like what Rado was saying before, we're all on this earth to do the best we can and to be compassionate. And I think being vegan, for me, is the best way to live a compassionate lifestyle in line with all of my ethics. And I'm anti-exploitation in all its forms, therefore I'm a feminist. Um, I'm anti, you know, using China products as much as I can. I loved that video before, Rado. Where did you get that from? I'll give you a link. Is that just on YouTube or did you make it? Yeah, it was very cool. And um, so my transition, when I first became a vegetarian in 1994, I was in year 10 at school. And um, I, my sister and I always used to fight over this piece of a leg of lamb that we had every Saturday night as a meal. And I knew it was a leg of lamb because that was what it was called. And I asked my mother, what part of the lamb is that that, that we're eating? And she said, oh, it's the Achilles tendon. And I remember looking down at my leg, because I have an Achilles tendon as well, and looking across at that lamb's leg and seeing their Achilles tendon. And I just was like, oh my God, I've never made that conscious connection before between the life that once was and the death that I was about to consume. And after that, there was no way I could eat red meat. So I was... Um, I went on a camp in year 10, it was an outdoor educational thing at my school where we went on a camp for a month and it was, you know, city kids going to the country and learning about the country and we looked after some chickens. So after looking after the chickens, there was no way I was eating chicken flesh anymore. And I just had calamari every now and then, but not really too much. And I still was consuming a lot of dairy products. Um, which was quite always, I always had problems with um, my chest or you know, breathing and things like that. And I'm also a singer as well. And when I stopped having dairy, that really helped with my vocals. 
And um, I, at this stage, this is when I was in school, and the only thing in our home economics class that we knew about veganism was like a one sentence thing in our textbook about, you know, vegans, you've got to be very um, wary of the things that you eat because you're going to be lacking rah 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 rah. So um, that was all I pretty much knew about a vegan at this stage. And um, I, I just didn't eat meat. So I just took meat out of my diet and I just ate the veggies around us. I didn't know what tofu was, I didn't know what tempeh was, I didn't know anything like that. And so when I, when I did that, obviously I got sick because I wasn't um, supplementing myself with the things that I was lacking in my diet that I used to get from animal products. And so um, once I became a bit more aware of what I needed, and I did this through groups such as Animal Liberation, the Vegan Society of New South Wales, and the Vegan Vegetarian Society of Queensland that we have here. And they gave me a lot of information on dietary stuff, what I should be eating, introduced me to a lot of different alternatives to mainstream fat. So that would be what I would suggest if you want to know more information, if you want to find out about how to supplement your diet with vegan products instead of mainstream products. And uh, yes, I learned a lot from that. And it also helped me reinforce the reasons why I wanted to live a, a vegetarian at that stage. And then when I found out what a vegan was as well, because up until then I didn't really know what a vegan was. And I went vegetarian because I didn't agree with killing animals and I didn't agree that I should be killing someone just, just for me to eat. And then when I found out that the dairy and the egg industries are even more horrific than dying, you know, the abuse, the rape and the everything that these animals go through just to produce products that we don't need in our lives, I wanted nothing more to do with that either. So I became a vegan two years after I became vegetarian. That was about January 1997, and I haven't looked back. And um, so there's many alternatives now. Like I was saying before, um, it was very hard for me to give up chocolate and ice cream back in the day. But now there's so many different alternatives. There's even, um, even just in Brisbane, we've got quite a few that you can try. If they're not online, there's the Green Edge, just at Nogra, that's a, a vegan store. They have a lot of vegan products that you can try. If, even in supermarkets, there's a lot of alternatives nowadays. And um, we all have the ability to reason and to act from a conscious level. We're not like your non-human animal friends that um, don't have that ability. So I just went with what my heart and my soul said was right and then I found the reasons to back it up after I found the facts and the figures about the health and that's how I always do things. I know and I feel that it's right and I do it and then find out the reasons why it's right later on. And um, so I believed that this was the most ethical thing for me to do and that's why I am a strict vegan. And it's because I believe we need to tread as lightly as we can on the earth and to cause the least pain and suffering that we can. And I believe veganism is the best way that we can do this. And that's to help, to help our environment, to help our health, and for obviously our animal friends as well. And so like I was saying before, veganism is anti-exploitative and this relates to many other things that I'm interested in, and like feminism, social justice, third world and poverty issues as well. I believe that veganism to me just encompasses all of those things that I'm interested in and things that I disagree with. And I think that by me being a vegan, that's leading by example to show people that I'm anti-exploitation in all these different forms. There's so many benefits to being a vegan and I find more every day to be honest but the biggest thing is when you meet animal friends and whether it's an animal sanctuary or you know there's some goats just near the road where I was driving past today they're very cute and um, to be able to look these animals in the eye and to know that they trust you is really humbling it's very beautiful. And um, for the health issues as well, um, it's really amazing to, uh, you know, if, if you're interested in losing weight, I lost a bit of weight when I was a vegetarian first and when I became vegan. Obviously, with a lot of the alternatives, um, the vegan foods now, I have quite a few friends who are quite overweight because of all the um, mock meats and the cheesecakes that um, they like to consume. I like cheesecake as well. 
And um, many, there's many reasons to become vegan, and a few of them are for the animal rights and welfare issues, which is why I became vegan in the first place. For the environmental and sustainable issues, which have become a lot more people becoming more aware of these issues at the moment. The ethical and moral reasons, health reasons, spiritual and religious reasons, and for weight loss or control. So over the years with um, me being a vegan and with people a vegan, I've attended festivals, I've given talks um, in, like throughout Brisbane, Queensland, nationally and internationally as well. And it's amazing to be surrounded by like-minded people um, and to just thrive on different ways that people do things and to get to know people better. Um, a few years ago, I didn't really know that many vegans. When I first became a vegan, I used to help out with Animal Lib and with the Vegan Vegetarian Society in Queensland quite a bit. Um, but a lot of them were older than me, like a lot older than me, and, and I wanted to get to know people that were around my own age. And a few years ago, I actually made this conscious decision to hang around more like-minded people because I was dating someone that just wasn't a positive influence in my life and I needed to get some positivity from somewhere else. And so once I made that conscious connection, I met so many, so many amazing people. And in the beginning, I just used to hang around people just because they were vegan. But I realized over time that, you know, just because someone's vegan, just because they're a raw food person, just because, you know, they like um, the Brisbane Lions, doesn't mean that I like everything else that they like. So I've, I've, I'm a bit more selective now with my friends, friend circles. And um, veganism is not just a diet, it's not just a lifestyle, it's actually a mindset as this relates to everything. And once you see and you feel something, you can't go back, you know, you can't, you can't go back in good faith after you've seen um, an animal get slaughtered, get hurt, get abused, get, you know, artificially inseminated to produ produce milk that you used to consume. You can't, well, I can't just stand there and go, okay, that's fine with me, pour me another drink. You know, so that's why I'm a vegan and a lot of my friends are. So with Viva La Vegan, it's been going since 2006 and there's a lot online, there's a lot of recipes, raw food recipes, there's videos, there's podcasts on iTunes. Um, I do a lot of how-to videos so I can show you how to make different things. And one of the, on Rado's slide before, there was my raw sushi rolls. So I do a video on that as well, for example. And um, yes, yeah, so there's quite a few different different things that Viva La Vegan does. We also have a blog um, and articles online. I also started a not-for-profit group a couple of years ago called Green Earth Group that Rado mentioned before. And um, we're an environmental group that raises awareness to the environmental issues that exist at the moment. And one of the main things that we focus on is promoting a plant-based diet because I believe that's the best way for people to take responsibility and to change the universe in the easiest sort of possible way because um, large amounts of water and energy are used to turn animal protein into inefficient, um, into inefficient protein for us. Large amounts of fuel energy is used for transportation of animal products from country to city areas. Large amounts of methane gas are produced in animals' digestive process. And the water involved in meat and dairy <coughs> industries needs to be treated after becoming seriously polluted. So there's a lot of things that a mainstream diet really um, doesn't help our environment with. And so, like I was saying before, to an easy, easy way today that you can actually have control and start making some positive choices instead of buying hybrid cars, instead of putting solar panels on your roof, is to just be vegan. And for our health, um, right I was saying before, the video we looked at before, and I'm sure a lot of you are very health conscious, is um, every, our world just seems to be overfed at the moment and people are overfed and undernourished and this doesn't seem to be changing. So many people don't seem to care about their health at all. And um, people are just you know, eating fast food, sugar processed, fatty and caffeinated foods and this is the norm. And I don't think that this should be right. I think people need to take responsibility of their health. People need to take back the awareness of what you know, nature has given us that we can actually thrive on. And a whole food, well-balanced, 
low-fat, plant-based, vegan diet can give you all the vitamins and minerals that you need. Um, the basic food staples uh, for a vegan diet is fruit and vegetables, whole grains, legumes and pulses, and nuts and seeds. And so I have a um, video called What Do Vegans Eat? And it's a scrapbook style presentation I gave. You can see that on my YouTube channel, which is vegan.net. And that's also on the website in the audio and visual section. And also because I do social media marketing, you can find that on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, and Google Plus. And um, so yeah, fruit and vegetables, they contain fiber and vitamins and minerals. And just think about, you know, a rainbow of color. There's so many different colors that you can consume in the fruit and vegetable kingdom, for example, over here. And um, especially dark green vegetables, like they're amazing. I'm sure, how many people love kale here? Yes, yes. I thought I'd get quite a good response <laughs> for that. And um, whole grains, also great. How many people love quinoa? I'm a bit obsessed with quinoa, and it's just such a beautiful grain. And um, you know, there's so many other alternative grains that you can have rather than white rice. Who would want white rice, honestly, when you can have quinoa? Um, and if you focus on whole grains like um, brown rice, quinoa, polenta, oats, and different things like this, even amaranth, um, you can you know, focus on making sure that your diet isn't boring because a lot of people will go, oh, you're vegan, what do you eat? Just veggies. Um, and I'm like, well, no, actually, since I became vegan, I realized how many different food types there are. And when I was doing my recipe calendars, I really got into the alternative grains in one year. I really got into um, transforming mainstream type meals that a lot of my um, male friends just made for themselves into a healthier version. And um, there's just, yeah, there's just so many alternatives, I think, that I find it really laughable when people just say that, oh, you know, I don't know what you're going to eat. Um, and that's really, that's just been boring, like think outside the square, make something good for me. Um, also, legumes and pulses, they have fiber, carbohydrates, and protein. Like Rado was saying before, you can get all your protein needs from a vegan diet. And um, they used to say back in the day that you had you had to plant protein combined. So there was three different protein sources. So you have your legumes and your pulses, your nuts and your seeds, and also your grains. So if you consume two out of those three groups in every meal, that would give you your protein. Nowadays, if you're having a well-balanced diet, including all of these different groups that I've gone over, the fruit and veg, whole grains, legumes and pulses, and your nuts and seeds, you should be getting enough protein, but make sure that it is well balanced. And there's, yeah, there's so many different types of legumes and pulses, chickpeas, kidneys, lentils, and um, you just have to wash them or soak them before you use them. I have um, a soaking and cooking um, article on vegan.net for that. And nuts and seeds are also a quick and easy protein source, like tahini, which is sesame paste, almonds, cashews, linseed, etc. And um, don't eat nuts daily if you if you have um, if you would like to watch your weight or you want to lose some weight. Does anyone have any specific questions? Yes, I did one. On the website, you also have events uh, or some sort of uh, that kind of here and that sort of thing. For, for how? Um, well, I actually just shaved my head in March and it's just grown back and I've been using bicarb soda in my hair since then because I'm trying to get away from relying on certain products. Um, so that's what I suggest. Okay. But um, you can buy from just, you know, from the supermarket, Nature's Organics, so that's pretty good. Um, some friends of mine run the cruelty-free-shop.com.au um, okay. and that has a lot of um, beauty products and that. That's based in Sydney and also the Green Edge that I mentioned before in the North Ground. Um, I've also heard um, apple cider vinegar is good for your hair yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, with the quinoa, how do you... 
you might be my favourite person today. Can you ask me to talk about quick quinoa? Um, okay, so for me, there's like so many different ways of cooking quinoa. I just think the easiest way is just to boil it. So like most grains, one cup of the grain to two cups of the water. So, and then just boil it until there's this beautiful ring around the periphery that comes and it's so gorgeous, especially if you use black or red quinoa and it's a little um, white around it. Um, and also I like to combine red, black, and um, white quinoa with amaranth and brown rice and just make a whatever you would normally make with brown rice with all those combined. Um, and there's also, you could soak quinoa as well. And for some of my friends that don't like to cook, if you have a thermos, if you have a kettle that you can boil, one cup of quinoa, two cups of boiling water, put it in a thermos, leave it, it's ready in the morning for when you wake up. What was your question? I was just going to mention you can sprout quinoa too. Sprout, yeah, exactly. I've got one more question. We are talking about sprouting. Um, can you, can, where do you buy all the sprouting grains? Or can you buy, like if you're going to sprout lentils, for example, mm -hmm. is it just the lentils you buy in the health food shop? Or? Yeah, just like, um, that's what I would use anyway. Some just people yeah. might just not agree with that. Seed, yeah. Just anything organic. Keep, make sure it's yeah. organic. And just in the bulk, you know, like Mrs. Yeah. Flannery's or something in the bulk section. Yeah. Um, that's all I would use. Does anyone else have any tips for sprouting? I've often wondered about that because I've been looking for special sprouting <laughs> seeds and I think, okay. You don't have to. You cook, you cook all your own pastas or you buy them in the tins, but that takes such a long time to cook. It know? does take a long and time. I'm thinking, you know, the cost of gas and electricity <laughs> now, I'm thinking, is it worth it? Well, if you think about it, if you buy them in bulk from a health food store mm -hmm. and you cook up a big batch, you know, right. once a week, once a month, you can freeze it for later, oh, okay. um, then that's, I think, that's saving money instead of like, you know, a dollar mm -hmm. per tin, what, 400 yeah. grams yeah. or something. Yeah. So, yeah. It just, a, you, you've got to make the effort to actually cook that. So it just depends how lazy I am whether I do that or not. And then if you do use canned stuff, you know, you've got to think about the, you know, the sugars and the salt that go into that, colourings, that stuff freaks me out a bit. Um, it's just only the stuff I've got on the internet and it's the inquiry I've been making and it, it's a bit complex, but I'll be frank. Um, most of the research I've been able to find suggests that people who are long-term vegetarians, I've been long-term vegetarians, um, don't live as long. As um, don't have the same longevity as, as, as people with me. Um, now, some research says seven years, short lifespan. Um, and this is um, a problem I have. Is that, uh, there appears to be a transitional period between, uh, like someone will be a meat eater and, and, and a bad eater, and uh, they will go vegetarian, and all of a sudden they lose weight, their skin, skin clears, that, that, that their eyes clear they feel healthier than they've ever been before. But as a period goes by, there seems to be a loss in, in, in muscle strength and texture very often for these people. Um, and there, there seems to be, then, then if you like, a, a curve. Um, and I've no, I, I know enough vegans to know this can be a problem. I'm not saying it, it necessarily should be a problem, but I think it is a lot in terms of, I don't think they they stay very well. Well, that's with anyone that's vegan or otherwise, if you don't know what you're meant to be eating, if you're not eating the right things, you're going to have issues, aren't you? I, I can't comment about how long people live. I don't know. How oh, long this is just research, aren't you? Yeah. I, I, I guess I'll, I'll go to you next. I guess the thing is, um, where are these research papers coming from? That's normally my first thing. Like, who's paid for this to happen? Um, are they anti soy milk? You know, um, where yeah, who's who is behind that? Do your research, chuck it back. That's normally my first thing. And um, if you haven't read the China study, I um, look that up because that's a that's a pretty good um, book. Um, T. Colin Campbell um, wrote about you know mortality. So I think you should have a look at that one. And um, yeah, like if. People that are having less muscle strength, you know, maybe they need to um, make sure that they're having the right amounts of protein in their diet and also doing some weight bearing exercises, like actually using their muscles. Yeah, it relates in my mind anyway, and this is a personal thing, to vibrational medicine. 
And I think if someone's at a spiritual frequency where they're up to having a certain diet, um, that, that their body is, 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 is sort of um, genetically aligned with that, vibrationally aligned, and perhaps being a vegan doesn't affect them. But if it's a, if, if, if it's a mental decision, but it, but it isn't a sort of vibrational reality within their being, perhaps their being isn't adjusting to that. I mean, that's yeah, the thing I'm maybe definitely. And that's like I was saying before. I knew in my heart, my soul, being vegan was right for me. But I didn't really know too much more than that. So I found out I ate the right things. I did my research. So maybe these people haven't done the research. Maybe they need to do a bit, a bit more research and educate themselves a bit more. But yeah, I, I can't really speak about. There's a lot of different factors involved with that, obviously. But I always, I always think that, well, I think you're too, because it's, it's actually like getting second-hand protein, isn't it? Because the animals eat the grasses and the, whatever the vegetation around. Definitely. So it's in the protein. If you're eating, if you're just getting second-hand protein. Yes, exactly. And then your body has to break it down. Break it and down. You, your body is a graveyard, and think about that from an energetic perspective as well, that you're consuming the anger, the, the you know, the upset, the the frightened animals were completely frightened and scared out of their minds just before they get killed and people are consuming that over and over and over and over and people wonder why everyone's so aggressive. Okay. I know you've been recently to Canberra and also Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about those festivals that were held in Canberra as well as in Melbourne, please? Yeah, definitely. I've just been on the East Coast of the festival tour, so um, Adelaide's tomorrow, but I'm not, I've decided I can't do five in a row. But um, I went to Canberra, um, I've been to Melbourne and then Sydney and then I went back to Melbourne. So Canberra was a new festival called um, Green Living Festival and um, Canberra government actually gave $20,000 towards this vegan festival and an environmental festival as well. So that was really good, it was the first year. And they had I think about 1,000, 2,000 people which was quite good for Canberra. And then um, it's an animal activist festival or group get together in Melbourne and um, I spoke there about promoting veganism online. And then I went to the Cruelty Free Festival in Sydney and this is the sixth year it's been running. So it's really quite a popular outdoor festival um, in Belmore Park. And I was the MC for that on the main stage, which was a lot of fun. And then um, I went back to Melbourne for World Vegan Day World Vegan Day is on the 1st of November, so there's a lot of things that happen in November. So if anyone wants to be vegan, November is the best month to do it. And um, there's yeah, the 30 Day Vegan Easy Challenge that's happening at the moment. There's a lot of things. And um, I spoke there about um, international activism. So yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem. So yeah, people people want to go interstate and meet like-minded people. That all those festivals are really good for that. And um, my Green Earth group, we actually put on a Brisbane festival for the past two years called Green Earth Day. But I'm not doing that anymore. It's too much. But um, I'll just wrap it up, right? Good for time, or we can have some questions after. But I was just going to say, um, if you are compassionate, then be compassionate. And if you're not, then learn. And healing of the self comes from healing others and vice versa. So if you don't contribute to any suffering towards any beings on this earth, then you're contributing to the healing of the universe. So that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you have any other questions, let me know. Mm -hmm. so thank you for your time.